a number of people have asked whether or not you can make biochar out of wood chips. The short answer to that question is absolutely yes, because all carbonaceous material excluded from oxygen and exposed to temperatures approaching its ignition temperature will begin to undergo the process of pyrolysis and char will be made. The other part to that question is, can it be made in a retort like this and is it actually a good idea? First part of the response to that question is, yes, in fact, it can be made in a retort like this. I've made several batches trying different configurations with varying levels of success. In order for me to make biochar out of wood chips in this particular vessel, I have to run it through twice. And that's largely due to the fact that it's very densely arranged and there's just not adequate airflow through that material. What I found is that it takes twice as much biomass in the outer chamber to get an equivalent amount of char on the inner chamber. Taking more time to drive off those gases means using more of this biomass, which is just not an efficient use of this resource. So let's take a look and see how well we did on making some char out of wood chips. This is the material that I typically run through. It's a soft wood, dug fir. And upon further inspection, you can see this is fairly well completely processed. By contrast, this had to be run through twice. When I opened this up the first time, there was still a lot of unburned material and it was smoldering quite a bit. And even upon opening this this morning and running my hand down through here, I can still feel heat down in here. You can see that there's some pieces that are unprocessed. And I think the real beauty of being able to do the wood chips would be that you don't have to do the extra step of trying to crush it. It's already down to an appropriate size. I've had a number of people reach out wanting to know where I got this barrel. But full disclosure, this was given to me from a friend free of charge. And I don't recommend people go out and spend money on something like this. The whole idea behind making biochar and doing it kind of in this way is to try to do this with waste streams and to do it with as minimal amount of money as possible. That said, I will be putting a link in the description to show where it is this was purchased, but I can almost assure you, you're not gonna like to see what the cost is. This barrel has held up extremely well. It's going on its third season now. It's got some, got some real battle wounds. I, I would say that this has probably been run through about 90 times and hopefully we'll see how much further I can get it. But there's definitely a lot of deterioration, a lot of warping, but it's still holding its integrity. The lid itself provides an adequate enough seal so that it's going to exclude the oxygen from the contents on the inside. That's really the most important thing. I'm assuming at some point it will fail as will the lid at some point, but, um, yeah, it's been a, a, a real workhorse. Choose material that's cross grain rather than straight grain. It just makes it easier for the manual crushing process. Now, if I had a crusher that was something that was mechanical, that wouldn't be as big of an issue, but I crush this manually. So it just makes it easier on the back end for me when I go ahead and I crush this. Here's kind of a look on the inside here, what I'm talking about as far as it being cross grain rather than straight grain. And by having the material kind of arranged in this size configuration, it allows an appropriate amount of airflow through the material so that there's going to be uh, even heating in this chamber. What I wind up having happen with the more densely packed wood chips is it takes a long time for that heat to evenly heat all that material. It takes a lot more fuel on the outside of this chamber in order to generate that. You get a sense as to what condition this is in. You can see there's a, a lot of deformation. It's really worked well for going down alongside and filling the space up in between the 55 gallon drum and the 30 gallon. One of the downsides to a retort, as opposed to doing something maybe in the ground where you have more room to work, is you just have very limited space in order to arrange all this biomass so it's kind of like a, a puzzle or a tetris game when you're loading it up but the benefit is 
is that once I load it up, I don't have to tend to it. I can light it and essentially come back the next day and the material will be ready to take out. There's still really good rim to lid contact. And the reason why it's deformed and it's concave is because of this heavy weight that I put on there, which just kind of helps to further keep this lid in place and seated. You want to make sure that it's densely packed enough, but you also want to make sure that there's enough available airflow around the material. see all the fire starting to draw toward the center and going out the flue. By propping this up with these sticks, essentially at this point I basically just walk away and as those burn out it will self-close itself and by then it will be going well enough so that it will still be able to maintain a pretty clean burn throughout. It's about 25 minutes since I started it can see that the sticks have burned through. The lid is self-closed. And the gases are being driven out of that inner chamber down here. It's the following morning. Let's take a look inside and see how that last batch ran. One thing that's particularly noteworthy I want you to pay attention to is look at the inside of the inner walls of this barrel. There's not a lot of residual creosote buildup. It's just residual carbon. On the other hand, my experience with this retort burning wood chips, even when they're completely dry, I wind up with a much slower burn, leaving a bit of residual creosote on the inside of that inner wall. You see ways in which I can improve upon my system to make it more efficient. Leave a comment like to hear from you. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching and go out and make some char.